Grocery prices in Canada are soaring, especially compared to our neighbors of the South. And obviously we have the corporations to blame, right? Let's dive into it. We're just finishing up a month of boycott to Loblaws, which obviously is a scapegoat for a much larger problem, which is groceries are way too expensive. I'm feeling it, you're feeling it. There's no denying that they're more expensive. The question I wanna to answer today is why? Why are groceries getting more expensive? Obviously these big evil corporations are just padding their pockets, but the further you look into it, as you might expect, that's not actually the case. This car cost me $130 for a meal and like, some snacks, basically, so I'm kind of over it. <laughs> kind of over it. Dale Camara is like most Canadians. New Ipsos polling done exclusively for Global News found 80% of people pay more for groceries each week, the majority $50 or more. <laughs> Prices are up unanimously. How is only 80%? Polling is so weird. Honestly, are 20% of people just not paying more? Are they just buying, maybe they're buying less, I suppose. That's a weird stat. The subreddit Loblaws is out of control has 57,000 members and a number of demands, such as signing the grocer code of conduct and no further retailer led price increases this year. Meanwhile, a petition calling for an investigation into alleged greedflation and pandemic profiteering by Loblaw is closing in on 100,000 signatures, launched by a university student and former superstore cashier. The headlines that we are seeing, record profits as Canadians struggle to eat, those two are pretty, pretty tied together, I think. I have this problem when people talk to me about record profits for grocery stores because everything forever will be record profits because the money is worth so much less. Like you probably are earning a record wage. Minimum wage is at record highs. It doesn't matter because the purchasing power of those profits or the purchasing power of those wages are significantly less. The number of dollars is completely irrelevant as opposed to the amount of stuff, the purchasing power of those dollars. L quick little tangent there. Food prices have risen 30 to 50% in two years, significantly more than the rate of inflation. Yeah, CPI is not a real measurement of what inflation is because you don't actually choose the basket of goods. I mean, we could just cherry pick the stuff that goes into the basket that they measure and we would have our very own CPI. I once saw a politician note that if you don't have food or energy, inflation is only 2%. Well, great, if we don't have food or energy, what else do you need to live? Another one, I recall a time in Canadian history when monopolies were frowned upon, now it is the age of Mordor, one ring to rule them all. Yeah, there's it's kind of two different stories here. We seem like we're blaming law laws for these price hikes when really the underlying current is obviously the money, but I do have a problem with the fact that it is so difficult to open a grocery store, so difficult, and these monopolies are getting so big, Things stop growing so fast. We don't get into the state of constant growth into pff, explosion. All right, what else we got on this boycott? Thousands of people now want to boycott Loblaw stores indefinitely. We're now 17 days into the Loblaw boycott and one Reddit user posted a poll asking the community what would they like to see happen after the month of May. Nearly 6,500 people participated and almost 60% of people voted to boycott all Loblaw owned stores. Definitely, but man, where are you gonna buy your groceries? <laughs> Great. Love it, but where do you buy groceries then? Do we honestly think, like let's let's walk through this logic here. We get rid of Loblaws, the biggest grocery retailer in the country. And then what? We have less choice? <laughs> you think the other grocery stores were like, oh, Loblaws is gone, we should probably lower our prices? No, come on, don't reduce choice. Don't boycott Loblaws. Boycott the ridiculous rules, the ridiculous money that force Loblaws into this tornado of growth. Just shop somewhere cheaper. <laughs> That's all you have to do. Hey, 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 you mean put the work in to find a cheaper price? How dare you suggest that I do work? Listen, I don't know how deep the rabbit hole is, but at the end of the day, period. <laughs> I have to spend money for food on the cheapest grocery store I find. Yes, this is how the free market should work. Again, I'm not like some Loblaws fanboy here, but I am really getting frustrated with the hypocrisy and the lack of foresight. Guys, the problem here is that we are forced into growth Forced into growth means limited choices. Limited choices means higher prices. If we continue to limit choice in 
response to limited choice, it will only lead to higher prices. Executives from Canada's biggest grocery chain are criticizing a boycott of its stores by shoppers fed up with food prices. Loblaw chairman Galen Weston called it misguided, saying his company alone can't be blamed for rising costs because inflation is a global issue. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't surprise me that the chairman's saying that, and frankly, I don't think he's wrong. Boycott and go shop at the other high-priced grocery stores makes sense. Okay, a more obvious troll that a dumb man like me can understand, 100%. So you might wonder, well, what is happening? This grassroots boycott, this is interesting. A little tidbit of information that I found here is that Jagmeet Singh, the leader of the NDP, was like uh, talking about this boycott. Thousands of Canadians are boycotting Loblaws this month. They're taking action because the Prime Minister refuses to take on the corporate greed, which is driving up prices for Canadians. Okay, <laughs> we touched on that enough. It is actually the Prime Minister's money printing that is causing this, not inability to take action on corporate greed. Corporate greed, which is what, 3%? Guys, come on, 3%. That's actually cheaper than the rate of inflation at this point. So uh, I, I will digress. But when you dive into it, shout out to Reddit user Marty up north underscore two. He says, Jagmeet is on a Loblaws case. He has a real hate on for Galen Weston. Loblaws released their full 2023 financials in late February. So their gross retail margin was 19 billion. Their staff, rent, utilities, advertising, trucking, blah, 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 15 billion. So they made about four, a little bit less than four. They employ 220,000 Canadians, making them one of the biggest private sector employers in the country. Notably, private sector, because I think the government is now the largest employer in the country, which is brutal. Interest on debt was 825 million. They paid 714 million in taxes. They, that's left 2.1 billion of net income. A minuscule 562 million from the profits were redistributed to shareholders. The rest of the profits were reinvested into new stores. In other words, they re-injected 1.5 billion into the economy. On paper, they earned $6.46 for a $150 share. That represents a return of 4.3%. Jigmeet won't be happy until Loblaws makes zero profit. What does he want them to do with the 562 million they gave back to the shareholder? Jagmeet's policies in support of the liberals does, does a lot more to hurt Canadians than law of laws. If Jagmeet really cared about helping Canadians, he'd kill the carbon tax and find other tax breaks for Canadians. A bunch of logic that, generally speaking, people calling for boycotts don't wanna hear, don't wanna listen to. Tiny, minuscule margins. Yes, it is a massive number, but honestly, 4% ROI is pathetic. That is not something, that is not worth the risk of going to zero, especially now that they're in the limelight of this pathetic government that wants to kill the entire company. Not worth the risk. So what do we think here? I mean, as of today, this Reddit page, this subreddit has like over 85,000 members. Loblaws though, employs 220,000 people. It's 220,000 people that you're hurting by boycotting. I don't agree with monopolies, and I don't think that businesses should be forced and rushed to spend their profits just to grow and outpace inflation. Keep your eyes on the prize. You and I, we wanna preserve the value that we make with our time. We wanna stay sovereign. So next time someone tells you, hey, grocery stores are bad, this corporate greed is getting out of hand, tell them that it's actually government greed. Tell them that inflation is the root problem for your grocery prices, not some executive that's making a 3% profit on 59 billion dollars of revenue across a massive organization that employs a quarter million people in this great country. And tell them to watch Future Proof, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and stay sovereign.